Welcome to labminutes.com in our lab video series on Cisco ACI 6.0. This is Metha, your instructor for this video series. For a complete list of ACI videos, you can visit our website under Data Center section. There you can also sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In the past videos, we have shown you how to configure all common routing protocols on a single L3 out to provide external connectivity to our ACI fabric. There may be times when you have more than one path to external networks and need to have those networks communicate through the fabric. And if you do, your ACI essentially needs to perform transit routing. In this video, we will be enabling and experimenting with transit routing on our ACI setup and go over caveats that you should know. Let's take a look at our ACI lab setup. We have an ACI fabric that consists of one spine, although not shown this diagram, and then two leaf switches, LM leaf 1 and leaf 2, with the ID of 201 and 202. Connected to that is the APIC server, APIC 1. We only have one APIC in our lab here. There's an L3 out to the core switch, switch 1 that provide external connectivity, and that includes the internet as well as the rest of our lab. There is a router LMR1 that we're going to be using to simulate additional external network connected to leaf number 2. If you watched our past videos, you know that our LMR1 will be using that to simulate an endpoint for our testing. Here we're going to be converting that to an external network. And we're going to go over the configuration of the router in a little bit. But first, let's talk about transit routing. Cisco ACI was originally designed to be a stop network, but has since supported transit routing. Transit routing means an ability to pass and exchange routes between multiple L3 out. While ACI supports static OSPF, BGP, EA, GRP individually, it may not fully support certain routing protocol pair when it comes to transit routing, so make sure to check Cisco documentations for details on the compatibility between the protocol pairs. Our goal for this lab is to configure additional L3 outs, one for each of the routing protocols, and see how we can allow transit routing between them. As you can see right here, we're going to be going through creating additional four L3 out, static EHRP, OSPF, and BGP, the one on the left, which is called L3 out default. That one is existing that we configured in the past video running on BGP. We're going to be injecting some routes for each of these routing protocols and see how we can make the communication happen between them. Note that all of these L3 out will be in the same VRF, VRF number one. To test connectivity, we have configured additional VRF on the LMR1 router, each with some loopback IP address, as you can see right here. So we have VRF R0, R1, R2, R3. Each of these will be mapped to the corresponding L3 out with the individual routing protocols. We have three loopbacks in each of the VRF using the IP schemes of 1 dot something dot 0, dot 1, or dot 2. The second octet is the one that's changed between the VRF. So we got 1.0 for VRF 0, 1.1 for VRF 1, 1.2 for VRF 2, and then 1.3 for VRF 3. The links between the LMR1 is going to be sub-interface using VLAN from 900 to 903 using a slash 30 subnet. So let me show you the configuration on LMR1. Here's the console to LMR1. Let's start off with the VRF, and you can see we still have our endpoint VRF, which we would not be using in this lab, ABC. The one that we'll be focusing on are the R0, 1, 2, and 3 right here. And you can see the mapped interface on the right-hand side. So we've got the loopbacks, the port channel sub-interface that we'll be using for the transit link. Let's do show IP interface brief, and these are the list of loopback interfaces three for each of the VRFs. 